All right, hey guys, Jamie here, and in this video, I'm going to show a little bit of uh, procedural uh, static mesh generation uh, kind of technique, and uh, this will be good for making like a, uh, a long fence or a long wall, or just repeating anything, uh, any kind of static mesh that you want to repeat in uh, in a in a straight line. Um, if you want to go outside of the straight line and you want to make curves and corners and things. Um, your best bet is going to be to look at uh, splines, um, but for something simple, if you're just looking for a simple fence uh, or a simple wall or something you can you can put up, um, uh, then uh, then this this way will work. And uh, now the the request was to make it uh, for two items to be able to repeat two items. And so I'm going to take it a step further and make it so that you can repeat uh, any number of items. Um, and uh, and I, it just makes it a little bit more complicated, but it still won't be that bad. And I think if you really just wanted two items, uh, you should be able to parse how to do that uh, from this video. So, all right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a structure. And the structures are just kind of like... Uh, describing your custom variable, if you will. So I'm going to call this one S repeatable, repeatable, and uh, it's going to have a couple variables. It's going to have a name, and I don't think it needs to have a name. I'm just it's kind of standard for me to put a a name on, on everything I do. Uh, it's also going to have a static mesh, right? mesh. Uh, it's going to have a uh, material for that static mesh. Okay, and then finally I want to add a transform uh, variable so that you could move it around. Uh, nothing that you grab from an asset pack or uh, even anything you make is, 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 isn't is going to need to be moved around a little bit or tweaked. Uh, so that's what this transform is for. Alright, so that's it. We're going to save that and now I'm going to show you how to use this. Uh, we're going to create a new blueprint of an actor because we're going to put it in the world and it's going to be called BP underscore repeatable all right, now inside here is where all the magic happens. Uh, we're going to go to the construction script here. Uh, we need a couple of variables to start with. Uh, the first one is going to be the number of copies, right? Uh, you know, how many how many copies of you of this thing do you want repeated in a line? Uh, we're going to make this public so that you can change it from the world, and we're also going to make it an integer. Okay, easy. And then we need a repeat width. I could spell repeat width. And this is basically how wide uh, do you want these things to repeat? Like if you're going to do a wall and it's 400 pixels wide or 400 centimeters, uh, you know, you'd put a 400 here. And we're going to make this a float so you can get pretty accurate if you needed to. Uh, and as well, you're going to make this public. And then we need a variable <coughs> for the repeating items. Okay, uh, this is also going to be public. It is going to be of the type s repeatable that we made. Okay. Now, if I compile this here, you can see this gives me one uh, of my custom variables. And so that only gives me one static mesh. So all we really have to do to fix this is go here to this uh, this button here and make this an array. All right. And then after we compile, now you'll see we can add as many of these as we want. So you can have as many different static mesh items as you want. And I think that's enough to get us started. So the first thing we're going to have to do is initialize all of these repeating items. 
Okay, so the these are just describing what we want to repeat. This doesn't actually do anything yet. So we actually have to create an instant static mesh, create a material, and assign it, and then add instances of it based on how many copies we want. And we're going to do that now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a for each so that for each one of these that the level designer specifies he wants to add we are going to break that struct out so that we can have access to all the stuff we're going to add a static mesh add instanced static mesh component make sure you add this one the instanced one not the regular static mesh you want the instanced Right, so we're going to drive that and the static and the so th this doesn't actually have an opening here for the static mesh which I think it kind of should because um, it's over here but it should be exposed here but it's not so we have to drag off of here and say set static mesh because we want to do it via code we want to pull this guy from here all right Next we want to add a dynamic material. So we're going to drag off of this again. Add dynamic. Oop. Dynamic. Okay, let's so create dynamic material instance. And we're going to drag this here to make sure we're wired up. And we need to set it to the material that we the level designer specifies. Okay, now we need to assign that material to this because even though this just creates, it doesn't actually assign the material. So we're going to go here and we're going to say set material. And we are going to wire this up. Now this is the material that's created, so we're going to drag this and that should be it. Now We've got the instant static mesh, we've set the static mesh, created a dynamic material, and set the material. And then next we have to, let's see, let's try to put these in line here. Okay, so now we need to, uh, that's fine if it goes through there. Um, we need to know how many copies we're going to do and we're going to create a for loop for this. So however many copies you said, we're going to now loop and add these to the world. So we're going to drag this here and we're going to drag off of here and say add instance. All right. We're going to wire that up. Now this has a transform and this is where the fun happens. We're going to split this out. We're going to get this transform here and we're going to break it. Now we're not really doing anything with the scale or the rotation so we can just drive those directly. Um, but we do need to change the location. This is where the kind of magic happens. So we're going to split these out and we're going to split these out. Now the Z and the Y can just go directly but the X is the one that's getting calculated. So what we need to do is we need to, for whatever index loop we're on, we need to multiply integer to float this repeat width. Okay, this is what we said we wanted to repeat. So uh, depending on what index we're on, we need to times that by the width. Then we need to add that to what we said we wanted our X transform to be. And then we can wire that in. All right, so I know that looks pretty complicated, um, but you'll see in a second with a couple of minutes of work, uh, we have something that's actually pretty powerful. So let's go to the world. Actually, let's go to the content browser, drag in our BP repeatable. And now I've got it set going down the X axis. So let's move this guy this way. So I'm going to make a quick wall. So my repeat width is 400 because I know that the walls uh, that are in the starter content are 400 and we'll just start with a quick, uh, number 5. Now I need to add a repeating item 
and then as soon as I set the static mesh you should see and I'll pick the wall with the door uh, you should see uh, it you should have seen it here let's see what am I missing okay so I missed something let's see we set the static mesh we added the instance we're looping material material and we go to the for loop oh copies is in the wrong spot okay so you see how your copies is in the first index we don't want that we want copies in the last index copies to last compile that and there's our walls. Okay. Now, here's where the cool part comes with having the multiple items available. I can go to repeating items, and there's my, my wall here, and I can add one. Let's say we're going to add the uh, uh, wall sconce. And again, I don't think the name really comes into play here. Uh, and I believe that's called the lamp. Okay, now you can see it popped up right here, right, floor level, and oriented wrong. Uh, we're going to put the lamp on it, just in case. And so we can go in our transform, and we can say, you know what, I need to rotate that, let's say 90 degrees, and I need to push it out in the Y a little bit. Okay, and I don't want it on the floor, so I'm going to raise it up in the Z sum. Right now, you can see where it starts here. I don't really want it there, so I'm going to push it over in the Z. I mean the X. I'm sorry, so that it's in the middle of the wall. And now you can see because the way the door is set up, it looks a little funny. So all I have to do is I go here. And I duplicate this. Now I've got three repeatable objects and I can push this over in the X and get myself what looks like something normal. Now of course I can change how many copies okay and it's pretty fast I can put a 500 500 and it's already it's already done with the 500. So it's pretty fast. Alright, so let's add a couple more. So we're going to add, let's say, uh, cube. Just because that's the item I know is in there. One millimeter cube. Okay, you see it puts it right there at the, the base, so we don't really want that. Uh, let's add some material to it. And move the transform. So I'm going to move it out, over, maybe up. I can scale it. Move it into the wall. And I made like a little bench. Or a little table. And again, you can, you want it symmetrical, or you want to, maybe you're making some kind of cool art thing, so i add another one. Actually, I want to delete that one. I want to duplicate this one. <coughs> and I want to push this over in the X, maybe raise it up in the Z. I don't know, just make something different. Okay, so I think that should describe how I do it anyway when you want something in a straight line. Uh, and again, if you mess with this number, you could space things out, you can squeeze them on top of each other. Okay, let's maybe you were going to make uh, cones, cones down a street, right? You could have those spaced out, or pylons, or something that's uh, separating the street. 
uh, you know, anything that you need in a straight line. All right, that is it for this video. If you got any questions, uh, let me know. And thanks for watching.